In addition to the degrees awarded to our graduates today, Columbia will also grant honorary degrees to some very special individuals. Their professional accomplishments, their creative vision, the way they engage with the world, all of that truly embodies the ideals we hold dear here at Columbia College Chicago. We will award six such degrees this weekend during our commencement ceremonies. The bios of each and every one of them is in your program book. It is my pleasure now to welcome Dr. Peter Carpenter. He is interim chair of dance and theater. He will introduce this morning's honorees. Dr. Carpenter is a master dance master. His work is cutting edge. It's a mix of movement and political activism. Please welcome Dr. Carpenter. It is my pleasure to introduce Judy and Dennis Shepard to you today. When the Shepard's son, Matthew, was murdered outside of Laramie, Wyoming in October 1998 in one of the nation's highest profile hate crime cases, the stakes of hate crimes and their relevance to the LGBTQ population became devastatingly clear. During and after the trial, it became apparent that the prevalent norms and laws of the day were insufficient to protect LGBTQ population from violence and discrimination. Quite the contrary, assailants could hide behind a gay panic defense whereby the victim's sexual or gender identity could actually be manipulated into a rationale for preferential treatment. Now, rather than retreating from public view after their son's trial, Dennis and Judy became activists for LGBTQ rights. They established the Matthew Shepard Foundation and they lent their support to a series of legislative initiatives beginning in 1997 under the Clinton administration and continuing throughout the second Bush administration. Finally, in 2009, 11 years after Matthew Shepard's murder, President Obama signed the Matthew Shepard Act into law, which brought hate crime protections to LGBTQ populations. I see the tenacity and perseverance of Dennis and Judy as evidence of the courage that is possible in the wake of loss. Rather than wilting and retreating, they found the strength to thrive and advance, not only for the memory of their son, but for the benefit of all of us who see ourselves as part of the LGBTQ community. In a moment when the most powerful in this nation seem intent on eviscerating hard-won civil liberties, seem intent on turning back progress we've made in pursuit of human rights, and seem intent in pitting the most vulnerable of us against each other. Judy and Dennis show us a way to reach across simplistic notions of identity to fight for those who are most vulnerable. They nudge me to see that as a gay, white, cisgender man, it is my job to fight against racial discrimination, to fight against xenophobia, to fight for trans rights and for the rights of all of us who identify as queer. They remind me that the oppression of one is the oppression of all and that I am not free if we are not all free. It is courage like theirs that we will need if we are to become the change we seek in the months and years ahead. Frankly, I can think of no better recipients for this honor at the present moment. What better examples to show us how to move from the sidelines of political discourse and into the center of change? Jude, President Kim, I present Judy and Dennis Shepard to receive the degree of Doctor of Arts. Judy Shepard, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Arts Honoris Causa with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations.
Dennis Shepard, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I confer upon you also the degree of Doctor of Arts Honoris Causa with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. And congratulations to you. Hello, everyone. Um, I can't tell you how much of an honor this is for us. I'm going to speak first, and then Dennis will have a few words. They'll be very different, I, I promise you. Um, first, I, I want to share with you what a unique experience this is for me, personally. Um, yes, it's like, I'm, I'm a short person. Um, <laughs> Usually when we speak at schools, it's like we have to remind people, please let your, your uniqueness, your individuality shine through. Don't be afraid to be who you are, be the best of who you are, be all of who you are. And I feel like that's a wasted sentiment today uh, for this audience because you spend your whole tenure here doing exactly that. And I hope you understand how lucky and privileged you are to have experienced that in this space because Unfortunately, you won't find that everywhere you go in the future. We are in very uncertain times right now, and we had such a wonderful ride during the Obama years of success and acceptance and discussion and progress. Yes, all of that. And I, I, I might fit the profile of a Trump voter, but I guarantee you I am not. Um, oh dear, I probably should have said his name. He who shall not be named. Um, <laughs> we were at Manifest yesterday, and I was reminded that I will be fine. You will be fine. But don't let go of who you are and what you learned here. That sharing and having a shared experience is what life has best to offer. And I am a firm believer in luck. But luck comes when preparedness meets opportunity. So I want to reiterate Dr. Kim's list. And by the way, I want to be him. Um, but the, being prepared and being on time and all those things he listed are critical you must learn, you must learn to recognize the opportunities when they present themselves. Don't be afraid to step forward. Don't, don't be afraid to be told no, because that's the worst that can happen, and that can be overcome in a heartbeat. The most important thing is to believe in yourself and what you can accomplish if you have the conviction to do it. And the work that Dennis and I took on after we lost Matt was, I don't know what else we could have done. It was, it was about him. But the thing that sticks out is we are still part of Matt's life and his family and his friends. And we are told how courageous this is. But really, this is what happens when you piss off somebody's parents. <laughs> so I want to leave you with this, which is my favorite closing part of anything that I do. It's a quote from Dr. King, and it says, in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Thank you very much. She always gets nervous when I get up to speak. Good news and bad news for the graduates. Good news is you're graduating. The bad news is your room is currently being fumigated, being turned into a sewing room. <laughs> for the parents, bad news, you're losing your baby. The good news is you now have extra room and time to spend in the bathroom. <laughs> you
yesterday I heard at Manifest, heard Dr. Kim say something that the revenge of the French. We are all fringe to somebody. We are all different to somebody. Not in this room, not in this auditorium, or this community. But somewhere you or someone else is considered fringe to somebody else. You're different. We are all different. Celebrate being different. We are a wealthy country. You are our wealth. Because of those differences, you as our national treasure will keep this country going. But you must remember, you can't stop you can't stop, you can't stop. This includes voting. This includes holding their feet to the fire for those you voted for or voted against. You can't suffer burnout after 100 days of who we have in office. You have to remember The media, advertising, journalism, writing, 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 broadcasting, being behind the scenes. All of you are important to get the word out. You are the eyes, you are the ears, and you are the voice that must be heard. If, if you happen to participate in one of the marches that happened before and after the, the um, inauguration, don't stop there. Your job is not done. You have a lifetime where you have to be the power and you have to tell the story and you have to explain to everybody why. So please, Follow your hearts, follow your dreams, never give up, and be blessed that you're in such a great college here with all of your friends who gave you the support you need. Remember, there are others out there who have no support who need you to be their support. Thank you very much.